I wouldn't really describe myself as a fan of anything, but I love my AirPods Pros. They sound fine. The active noise cancellation is excellent without any kind of weird pressure on my ears. And they are among the most comfortable in-ear headphones that I have ever used. So when I saw Apple's third gen regular AirPods, which bring that AirPods Pro shape to a lower price point, albeit without active noise cancellation, I was pretty excited. And this is my first hands-on, brand new. There you go, we're tearing off the seals. AirPods with MagSafe charging case, okay. For headphones, I actually see MagSafe as having more value for me personally than it does for a phone. I don't have a ton of difficulty lining up my phone on a regular Qi charging pad, but every once in a while I do miss with these just because they're so small compared to the normal shape of a charging pad that I could see that being extremely useful. AirPods, thanks. Don't bother telling me what generation I bought or anything like that. Who cares, right? Still resentful of their naming schemes. Now, is this smaller? It's smaller. I've sequestered myself actually. Anthony did all our coverage of the event. So all I saw was that it's the AirPods Pro shape, but you don't have to pay quite so much for it. They are a lot smaller. Wow. They're basically the size of the old AirPods carrying case, except it opens up horizontally now instead of, instead of vertically. Actually here, I'm just gonna pull this out. That is like, is that, is it exactly the same size? Boy, is it ever close. Wow, hold on. I think it might be a little thicker. If it's thicker, it's marginal, it's really close, which means then that it's going to fit perfectly in your headphone pocket. Boom, just like that. Oh man, that goes in real easy. That is one of the biggest advantages that Apple has over their competition because there's tons of other earphones out there that have four-ish hour battery life in the earphones themselves and then offer another 20 something in the case. But where Apple really stands out is that they do it in a case that is way smaller. And now they do it in an earphone that is really, really aggressively sized. To be clear, the new third gen AirPods have six hours of battery life, which is even more impressive given the size of the case. Now, one thing that I can tell you guys that I'm gonna miss immediately is you can see that the silicone tip from the AirPods Pros is not present on the new AirPods. One nice thing about this is it means that after six months, you won't be being shamed actively into buying a new pair because your ear tips, which are white for some reason, turn yellow. There, that's a little less unpleasant looking, right, Brendan? Now, interestingly, these are not really quite the same shape. But wouldn't you be more concerned with the AirPods Gen 3 clogging up with wax? No. That's a really big grill. All you're gonna need is a little bit of moisture, like an isopropyl alcohol, get it kind of softened up a little bit. You should be able to pretty much wipe that out. I mean, the deeper it goes in your ear, the more wax buildup is gonna be a problem. I know that some people in particular do have trouble with their AirPods clogging up with wax, but I'd say that they've actually done a better than usual job of making it uh, cleanable here. Obviously, if it you know disassembled in any way that was helpful for those kinds of things. It would be better, but never change Apple. Oh, is there anything else included? Yes, you get a USB-C to lightning cable. So wireless charging sold separately. Okay, what I'm really interested in is the ergonomics, because that's my favorite thing about the AirPods Pros. LG's latest tone freeze, the uh, FP8s are actually very, very close in terms of comfort, but these are really, really good. I just wanna put my regular pros in for a sec here. My daily drivers, okay, basically perfect. They're impossible to remove from my ears without putting my fingers in to take them out. I actually sleep with them in almost every night. I turn on the active noise cancellation, it just kinda of helps me sleep through random noises. I absolutely love these things. Let's see how much you're giving up for, what is it, 70 bucks? That's the difference in price, I think. Hmm. They're not gonna come out, but you're also not gonna have that snugness that you get from a silicone ear tip. My biggest takeaway, just from putting them in my ears, I haven't even listened to anything yet. My biggest takeaway from them right out of the gate is Apple, please don't discontinue the Pro line. <laughs> not everyone likes that in-ear canal sort of violated feeling though, so your mileage may vary, but the other thing you're not getting compared to the pros is you're not getting any kind of passive noise isolation, which is not the same as cancellation. So the pros 
have both. They isolate well because they've got this nice seal with your ear, but they also actively noise cancel using the microphones that are on the outside of the earphone. These have neither. There's no active noise cancellation, and because they don't form a seal with your ear, I can hear every bit as well right now, maybe slightly less well, but almost as well as if I didn't have them in at all. What? No, I don't want to find contacts. Just not now. I'm trying to listen to music, you idiots. Why does every music app want to know everything about you? Well, I mean, we all know the answer, but stop. Oh my God, I have to put iOS 15 on this iPhone. While we wait, it's time for a message from our sponsor. Hey, yeah, hey, indeed. Instructions, dip the toothpick, dab it on your tongue, read the sponsor spot. Don't be a B word. Flatline hot sauce. If you're not familiar with dbrand, they make expensive electronics tape that you can wrap your devices with. This is from a drop we did with them a while back, their sticker bomb skin. Uh, message them and ask them for it. I know they've got, they've got lots of this still. It wasn't limited edition at all. And they also make a habit of trolling me in their sponsor spots that they must sell a lot of electronics tape in order to pay for because they're not cheap. Pepper Palace, the end. I just wanna know what's in it. Oh, Reapers, okay. Oleuracin, capsicum, capsicum. I think I've heard of those before. I think those are bad things. All right, well, good luck, everybody. <gasps> oh, no. Dbrand, if I end up with hiccups for the entire rest of this video, I'm gonna be pretty pissed off. That's it, Dbrand, you don't get any more talking points than that. Don't like it? Complain to your rep's boss. Oh, wait, he don't care. The cold water is so soothing. LTTstore.com, baby. Update's done, we're ready. I'm expecting a super simple pairing process. Connect, press once to play, pause, twice to skip forward, three times to skip backwards. Here we go. Oh, interesting, okay. I was not expecting them to make a noise when I put them in my ears because um, that's the, usually the indicator for whether you're turning ANC on and off. Okay, holding just gives you Siri. Oh, shut up Siri. I do strongly prefer the squeeze style stems compared to the tap on the old regular AirPods. This is way better. It's way harder to accidentally actuate and it's way easier to hit on purpose. Got the same little tick noise to confirm that it registered. Now, how do I control whether spatial audio is on? I can tell that it's probably on right now. That seems like a weird thing for them to have on by default though. The fact that there's so many hits for this tells you everything you need to know. Settings Bluetooth. Thank you for not bringing that up when I searched for it. There we go. You can turn it on in control center. So I can't turn it on here. It doesn't do anything. See, this is just to hear the difference. Okay. It was on then. So that explains why it had that huge sound, kind of sound to it. Let's turn it off and see how they sound without any weird digital tricks. I could see people liking it in the same way that there's a lot of people that do like DSP effects, you know, like uh, to give a more auditorium-like sound to what they're listening to or whatever else. Personally, I strongly prefer to listen to music as the artist intended it without any effects. That's not my vibe here. I'd also probably never use a head tracked mode. Now that's interesting. Apple is doing more than just adding a DSP effect here that gives it spatiality. They're also playing around with EQ as far as I can tell. And in much the same way that modern laptops, if you listen to their speakers without the drivers installed, they sound horrible. Manufacturers are adding a lot of software compensation for the drivers that make them sound better. I think Apple is actually tuning the sound as well as adding that openness to it. Yeah, the big thing is that they have an adaptive EQ in these ones. Sorry, adaptive EQ? Where do you adjust that? It appears to be just running all the time. That's a really interesting move because I think a lot of people are gonna turn on the spatial audio and they're gonna be like, wow, how did I ever listen to music before this? But a big part of the effect is coming from something that doesn't have to do with that spatial effect. I wonder why. Well, I guess I don't really wonder why. I guess it's a way to have people hooked on the Apple ecosystem. Because to my knowledge, these features won't be supported if you pair to an Android device like I do. I actually daily drive these with an Android device. All right. Let's move on though. 
How do they sound compared to the AirPods Pro? Because I think that's the decision a lot of people are gonna be making, especially with how much more expensive the Gen 3 AirPods are compared to Gen 2s. Interesting. So my option for, my option for spatial audio goes away when I'm sharing my audio. It's really hard to compare. It's like comparing an open-backed headphone with a closed-back headphone. They have very different flavors. Another thing that makes this challenging is these are my daily drivers. I listen to them every single day. So inherently, there's a bit of bias towards them because your ears tend to like what they often listen to. I, other than the lack of noise isolation and noise cancellation, I can't find a problem with them compared to the AirPods Pros. I'd say they are on par, to be clear. Neither of these are audiophile grade IEMs. If you wanted those, you could expect them to have a wire on them, but they both sound good enough. And if your main concern is not tuning out the world around you, man, these are a huge step forward compared to last gen in terms of comfort, in terms of sound. Yeah, what can I say? Good product. Do you want just the microphone though? Oh, the mic, is the mic supposed to be worse? Oh, I mean, yeah, we can do a quick, uh, we can do a quick call. Sup, Mr. Tan, how's my, uh, how's my audio quality doing over there? I would have you test my AirPods Pros as well, but I have a slight problem with the microphone on my AirPods Pros because I ran over this one in my car. Mm. <laughs> uh, the microphone is a little bit, it used to be good. It used to be good. Well, we can't really fault, uh, Apple for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like my videos used to be good back when I was in the kitchen. Life sucks now. But if you disagree with that statement, go ahead and subscribe.